Mitch Ribble didn't just survive Arthur Burke's beard, he shot him down. Today we're going to break down how Bivol's use of a high guard defense helped him to neutralize one of the greatest, most dangerous punches in modern boxing. But before we dive into the details, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more expert boxing breakdowns and techniques that you don't want to miss. Now let's get into it. Arthur Birchbiff entered the ring with a terrified reputation with a 100% knockout ratio. He was known as the most dangerous puncher in modern boxing, stopping 20 of 20 opponents that he's fought. But in this fight with Dimitri Bivol, Dimitri did something that no other person could do and he used the high guard defense to weather the storm for 12 whole rounds. Now, Bert be a threw an outstanding 1,023 punches, but only 233 of them landed. That means that Bivol's high guard neutralized nearly 80% of Bert Bia's punches. And when it comes down to high impact shots, the results were even more dramatic. Out of all of those punches, only 23 high impact punches landed for Bert Bia. Now, a lot of people are debating with that, saying he must have landed a lot more, but it's talking about landed, not thrown. Because Fern could be hitting the guard, that's landed. Meanwhile, Bivol counted effectively landing 50 high impact punches. That's almost, that's over double, over double. Now, Bivol's accuracy was incredible too. Out of 583 punches, that's almost half of the amount that Bert to be a through. But Dimitri Bivol landed 219. That's just 10 less punches. Even though he threw half the amount of punches. So that gave him a landing percentage. They gave him a, land, a landing rate of 38% compared to Bertie of 22%. Now, the numbers sound close, but trust me, that's, there's a big difference. People made Bertie of's landing rate look very measly. Now, this wasn't just about throwing punches. This was about how Bivol's high guard allowed him to absorb the shots so Bertie wouldn't land, but put him in position where he could counter because he was still in range. Now, let's talk about pressure. Bertie was pressing him forward and according to the stats, the AI stats, he had 45% pressure and 35% aggression. Constantly trying to close the distance between him and Bivol and land his signature knockout blows, but Bivol's defense held firm. Despite being under relentless pressure, he was never visibly hurt, never staggered. Even though we did see Bertie B have staggered early on in the fight, his high guard defense for Bivol kept him composed and ready to fire back at all times. Even in the later rounds when everyone's saying that Bertie B was like doing some serious damage, I didn't see that. I saw Bivol in a high guard pressing forward. He would, that's not, when you're hurt, you saw, you seen fights when fighters are hurt. Look at AJ Dubois. When fighters are hurt, even when AJ hurt Dubois, what did he do? He backed up. Now when Bivol got hurt, he came, well, when Bivol got hurt, he came forward in a high guard and threw back punches. And that's because this was a masterclass in defensive boxing from Bivol. He didn't just survive. No, he thrived. And this wasn't the first time we've seen the high guard used and neutralize big knockout punches. Remember when Joshua Grotti fought Manny Pacquiao? Pacquiao was known for his light and fast combinations and his knockout power, but in their fight, Pacquiao couldn't stop Grotti. Why was that? Grotti's high guard absorbed most of, if not all of Pacquiao's relentless flurries. Though Crotty didn't win the fight, he managed to stop Pacquiao's knockout streak. He stopped it. Pacquiao was knocking out everybody in the waterway division. He even stopped Cotto. But when it came to Crotty, boom. And that was because of the high guard. Now, just like Crotty, Bivol used the high guard to neutralize one of the most dangerous punches of this era, Arthur Bertubiev. He used his defense to not only block the punches, but also to create opportunities for offense. By keeping his hands in a guard tight, He's tying the guard, but Bivol was able to bait Bertie with over committing because when your guard is tight, you look like you're in a submissive position and now the attack is going to over commit and start whacking shots. Now what Bivol did is he caught them and was able to capitalize with sharp counters. But of course, no discussion about defense is complete without mentioning defensive genius himself. Floyd Money Mayweather Jr. Now, Mayweather was known for his Philly shell and his shoulder roll, but Mayweather often adopted the high guard whenever he was in front of a serious threat or whenever he was hurt. For example, his fight against Shane Mosley. Mayweather was robbed by a massive right hand in the second round, sent, sent him the, an opportunity to finish the fight. Mosley attacked harder with flurry of punches, but Mayweather immediately went into the high guard and closed the gap. 
protecting himself, riding out the storm, and eventually regaining control of the fight. That was because of the high guard. But that wasn't the only time he used the high guard. So he was hurt and he used the high guard. But also, when he fought Manny Pacquiao, and Pacquiao landed, that, he timed the backhand, and Mabel was open. I think there was, there was a slow-mo video of that. And he lands flush of Mabel. Mabel went back to the ropes, and Pacquiao flurried. And what did Mayweather do? He resorted straight back to the high guard. Of the need to develop angles and not come straight down the middle. Although that left hand landed for Pacquiao and maybe hurt Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather covering up and protecting. Pacquiao landed a right hand, a left hand shot. It's left for Pacquiao. And now the Pacquiao. Because he knows from that position, he hasn't got to worry about his, um, his reflexes, his reaction time. He's guarded up most of his body. He stays tight and the shots just can't get through. So is the high guard the ultimate defense? What makes the high guard so effective? It's a defense that combines protection and positioning. It allows the fighter to minimize the damage while staying in range to counterattack, which is very, very important because you're not just you, you know, you know, it, you can use it as active defense, like see my Tyson will slip and counter, but the <laughs> thing is that when you're slipping punches or when you're rolling punches, you have to have great timing, great reaction time. With the, with the high guard, you haven't got to. you you need timing, but not as great timing because you're standing still, you're in a stationary position. Punches come towards you, you catch them, and then you can easily counter because the opponent must be in range to hit you. So whether you're fighting someone aggressive as Pacquiao or as powerful as Bird to be, the high guard can be the difference between surviving and thriving in that ring. Now, in conclusion, the high guard isn't just a defensive technique. It's a crucial tool for neutralizing and the most dangerous punches, whether it's Dimitri Bova using it to stop Bird to be able to knock out power, just for Clotty blocking Pacquiao's Offense or Floyd Mayweather relying on it when he's under fire or in a situation where he might be hurt. The high guard has proven time and time again to be the most effective defense in boxing. And that's what I want a lot of boxers to watch out for when, when you're, when you're studying this fight. Look at Dimitri Bivol's defense. Such a simple pragmatic defense, but look how effective it is. You've got to implement that into your game because there's no master in boxing without mastering the high guard defense. So if you're serious about boxing, mastering the high guard is essential. Let me know in the comments, who do you think had the best high guard? Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a boxing breakdown just like this one. <laughs>